The following video is a Dennis the Menace production. Dennis the Menace, this name will never stick. On this episode of Is That Gonna Be On The Exam, we look at malicious software. When discussing malicious software, first we need to ask ourselves how many different kinds of malicious software are there? There are plenty of different types of malicious software out there, however, we are going to focus on the five main types, and um, those different types include viruses, worms, Trojan horses, spyware, and root kits. So those are the five main ones we're going to be focusing on for the IB exam, but there are also other different types that are out there as well. A virus is a malicious program designed to replicate themselves and cause damage to computer systems. Um, viruses can spread through only one way, which is having the user of the computer open or run a program that has a virus installed in it. So after the program has been run or installed, then the virus is automatically in the computer and it delivers its payload. A payload is the uh, thing that the virus does to your computer. It could range from just spamming it with pop-ups or it could erase data. So that's what the payload is, it's just what the virus does and um, it could range in severity but it's almost always bad. Worms are very similar to viruses, however they differ in the fact that worms do not rely on user interaction to spread. Worms do not need to uh, be in programs that are open to run, once they're in the computer they can spread themselves. So if they just get uploaded on, the user can do anything. So that's how they differ from viruses. But they still have the same idea where once they're in, they uh, drop their payload and ruin your computer systems. Besides just data destruction, worms may also take up large amounts of bandwidth, which may cause computers to run slower, which will cause a lot of frustration for many users, uh, besides just having uh, data corruption in their files. In order for a Trojan horse program to uh, be activated, it requires that the user of the computer run the program that the Trojan horse is located in, and then they're able to uh, deliver their payload. However, uh, Trojan horses are able, uh, they trick people into allowing them to run the program. So it'll pretend to be something else, possibly even antivirus software or um, anything of that nature and it will end up actually being a Trojan horse of malware and that will uh, destroy your uh, files and all your information. So that's how Trojan horses where they kind of just like trick people like the uh, uh, Roman sack of Troy. The next type of malicious software we'll look at is spyware. Uh, spyware monitors the user's activities without them knowing and uh, looks uh, basically can tell other people that are using the spyware what the other person is looking at on the computer or doing. Uh, the purpose of this could range in many different things from just uh, placing advertisements based on uh, what you've recently searched or uh, using uh, key loggers to take your username and passwords and give them to other people. A key logger is a uh, part of spyware that will uh, follow the keystrokes you make so that way when you're inputting usernames or passwords onto secure sites, it'll keep track of that and send it to the person who implemented the spyware and allow them to see what you are typing as your username and password and therefore hacking your accounts. So that could be a very huge ethical issue. Uh, the final piece of malicious software we're going to look at is a rootkit. A rootkit is a particularly hard form of malware to remove from a computer. Um, they are able to alter the computer's operating system to hide their presence from appearing as a running process, so that makes it a little bit harder for people to see that they are actually running in the background. And uh, reinstallation is usually the best way to remove a rootkit, however it's not always going to fix this. That is because the rootkit can install into the computer's BIOS and start running before an operating system is even loaded, so it's just going to be in the computer and there's you have to just pretty much get a new computer, you can't do anything else to it. So root kits are definitely one of the most dangerous types of malicious software that can harm your data or just make it impossible for your computer to work. There are many instances of famous malicious software being used in the uh, global world, including Chernobyl of 1998, the Melissa of 1999, 
I Love You of 2000, Code Red of 2001, Slammer of 2003, and Stuxnet of 2010. Uh, the I Love You Worm was a mass chain email with the subject line I Love You, which would uh, trick people into opening it and therefore infecting the computer and uh, automatically sending it to all of the person's contacts to continually spread. Um, another great example of uh, famous malicious software Slammer went in 2003, infected over 75,000 computers in less than 10 minutes, which was unprecedented at this, that time. So um, all of these are very common things and are very famous and common in the global society of information technology. There are several impacts of malicious software, uh, the first of which is data corruption. If one of the malicious software is downloaded onto your computer, a large amount of your data could be corrupted and may not be able to ever be used again. Another one is the idea of creating backdoors. A backdoor is a way for an unauthorized user to gain access to your computer and uh, use it without actually being there. So that could be dangerous. And then finally, the den there's denial of service attacks. This is when a computer is just com uh, ple completely bombarded with uh, such a large amount of requests that's unable to function properly and will be unable to work. So all of these result in either having a computer that doesn't work or having uh, corrupted files and data which makes it useless because all of your files are ruined. So you can see that malicious software is very harmful to everyone using computers. And uh, one of the most popular questions when discussing malicious software is can you avoid it? Uh, there are several ways to avoid malicious software, including uh, installing antivirus software onto your computer, which will scan programs and other software to make sure they are virus-free before you install them, which makes you feel more confident about what you download. Uh, another way to avoid malicious software is only download software from well-known, trustworthy sources. Don't go to like the back waters of the internet to find free downloadable stuff because you never know what it could be. Uh, what could be in it, such as a worm or a Trojan horse. Uh, always just use the most trustworthy source to make sure that your um, software is safe. And finally, avoid common sources of malware. Um, illegal downloads is one of the most obvious. If it's illegal to download it, it's probably not the best people to trust, and they might have put something in it that you do not want on your computer, such as a virus. So you need to be careful when handling that kind of stuff. And finally, these are the sources I used uh, to find information on this uh, project. And thanks for watching a Dennis the Menace production video. Dennis the Menace Productions. I can't believe that name stuck.